Hi, this is Colin Gordon, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a access point in order for a user to be able to use a common piece of terminal software to be able to access and navigate one of their critical cyber assets through the SEL3620 proxy. Now, the steps to do this are fairly simple. I'm going to start off on the interface of the SEL3620, the web interface, and create what's called a port map. Now, to create a port map, we click the port mappings link. And at the top of the page, we click Add Group. Now, this group is going to allow me to instantiate a Ethernet Listen Local driver using Secure Shell. And this will allow me to access the relay through the SEL3620. So I'm going to call this new group Proxy. And then my next step is going to be to add an Ethernet Listen Local driver that will allow me to access the relay. Now for the device type, I'm going to click Ethernet Listen Local. And then on this page, this is the settings for that secure shell interface that I'm going to create. The alias for the settings I'll just call Engineering Access. I'm going to have it listen on my default front port interface. Port number, you can make this anywhere between 1 and 65535. I'm just going to choose a common port, which is port number 22. Protocol, I'm going to choose SSH. And then the important part that actually allows me to access this relay is I'm going to click the Master Port option. Now under Master Port settings, I'm going to check it to make it a scripting enabled master port. And this is the special sauce that allows you to look at the group privileges, select the relay, enter various access levels without an engineer needing to know what the relay passwords are. Termination string, I'll explain that here in a bit, but that's control W by default with a leading time of one. That's just fine. Go ahead and click submit when you're finished. So now in a previous video, we actually uploaded the connection directory to the 3620. So we know we have a connection directory on this device already. And when you add a scripting enabled master port on the 3620, it'll sense that connection directory and show you the device that's already been added via that connection directory. So it's showing us that we have that SEL 735 relay, and that matches the global device ID on the SEL relay in the connection directory. So this 735 here matches what is listed on the web interface of the 3620. And it shows that it's connected via serial port 9 on the back of the SEL 3620. Now, how I as an engineer would access this relay is using the SSH protocol via port 22. So that's what this information means when I go to the port mappings page on the SEL 3620. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something like PuTTY, or I could use a terminal software that's built into Accelerator QuickSet. I'm going to use TerraTerm in order to access this SSH interface that I just created on my 3620. So I'm going to open up TerraTerm. I'm going to make sure I have the correct IP address, the protocol, and the port number. And I'm going to go ahead and access the interface, the 3620. Now, I'm going to log in using my supervisor user. I've given all access to the supervisor group, which means I should be able to access any part of the relay that I want to as the supervisor user. So I'm going to go ahead and enter the supervisor username and password. And here I am on the proxy prompt of the SEL 3620. Now at this point in time, I want to be able to view the list of devices that I have access to as a member of the supervisor's group. So I'm going to type the who command, WHO, and that's going to show the 735 relay that I have access to as a member of the supervisor's group. To select and access the prompt of that relay, I can type in the command SEL, which is select, and then 1, which is the current device, uh, the 735 relay. And now you can show that I have access to the prompt on this relay. Now if I quit down to the connect level prompt, I can show you the ID command there. And as a member of the supervisors group, since I have access to any account level I need to on the relay, I can simply enter the account level command and the 3620 will intercept that command. It'll enter the relay passwords in the background on behalf of my user and then simply drop me off at the prompt. So here I've gone to the 2AC prompt. I have read write level privileges and I can run whatever command I'd normally run as if I were directly connected to the front port 
of the relay. I can run my id command, my ser commands, my hiss commands. There is an exception. I cannot run the pass command, which is normally used to change passwords or to view passwords on that relay. So the nice thing about what the 3620 does is it prevents me from needing to know what those passwords are. It simply knows that I'm allowed access to the different parts of the relay depending on what group I'm a member of. Now remember I told you about a special termination string and that termination string is a special command sequence that allows me to back out of this relay and select another relay to connect to. So that special command sequence in this case was control W and by entering that command sequence I can go back out to the prompt of the 3620 and select another device to go to if I wanted to. Now I'm just going to show you the different levels of privileges. I'm going to exit out of this interface and I'm going to log in this time as the technician level user and I'm going to enter the technician username and password. And as the technician user I'm only going to be able to have access to the connect level on the relay as well as the ACC level. So I don't actually have access to the 2AC level as the technician which would allow me to change settings on the device itself. So you can see that as I go to uh, the, the relay and select it, I have access to the connect level. I can go up to the ACC level and that password will get managed on my behalf. But if I try to go to the 2AC level, it's actually going to challenge me for the password. And if I have random passwords on this device or there's some sort of strong password that's not been shared with me for this relay, I won't be able to access that 2AC level on the relay. The 3620 prevents me by not entering or managing that password on my behalf. And that's because if we go back to the connection directory, you'll see that I do not have access to the 2AC level of this relay. And that's a quick and dirty introduction of how I can use a terminal program like PuTTY or TerraTerm in this instance to access my device and manage it through the SEL3620 proxy. If you have any further questions about how to get this scenario up and running or you're needing some troubleshooting steps, please refer to the 3620 product manual or you can email or call me directly at SEL.